could they claim that they are Muslims? But really, they are plotting against the Muslims. Despite this being the case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still addressing them people as Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still addressing the people as believers. Because outwardly, the outward state is that they are Muslims. So that is not for us to start saying, oh, you're a Muslim, you're not a Muslim knowledge. We haven't got the authority or we don't, haven't got the time, to be honest, to be going down these routes and having these conversations. So the reason why we then call ourselves the Ali Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Ali Sunnah means the people of the Sunnah. And the Jama'ah is the congregation. Jama'at, we did namaz in Jama'at, means congregation. So we follow the teachings all the way back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our beliefs are in line with the beliefs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what they taught all the way down to us. And our Mashaikh, the scholars, have preserved these beliefs and they are able to prove the beliefs from the Quran and Sunnah and we stick to these beliefs that we have. And our beliefs are clear cut and they are proven and substantiated from the Quran and Sunnah and we don't deviate from it. Anybody else wants to believe anything else, that's their own business. Our business is to keep our eye on our job, which is to continue with the belief that we have and to make sure that our amal our deeds are in line with the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because ultimately, when I'm in my grave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to ask me about some other sect. They don't want to say, okay, tell me about the Jubandis, tell me about the Wahhabis. I'm not going to be asked about them or what they believed or what they didn't believe. That's none of my business. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't ask me, you know, like through the angels, who is your Lord? What did you used to say about this individual? Namely Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, what have you done with your life? What, do, what good deeds have you done? What have you brought forward? When on the day of judgment, you know, when the bizarre, the scale is there, it's not somebody else's deeds and somebody else's beliefs that are going to be weighed up on my scale. No, my deeds are going to be on my scale. So I need to keep my mind and my eye on my own beliefs, on my own actions, on my own deeds. Everybody else lead them to whatever they need to do. We need to concentrate on ourselves. So this briefly, explains to you who the Ali Sunnah wal Jamaat are. Furthermore, most of us being from Pakistan, being from the Indian subcontinent, in terms of what it's called, Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, we have some great, great scholars who have come from the Indian subcontinent. And one of the greatest is Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Fazli Bravi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala the amount of work they have done in terms of preserving the beliefs of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah in that in that area because there was a riot, you know, many people came around that time and started spreading fitna, spreading corruption, spreading incorrect beliefs. And Imam Ahmad Azahar, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, they did some fantastic work in dealing with these individuals who brought about this fitna and keeping us on the on the right track in the right way. This is why when somebody asks you, someone may say, okay, I'm a Brailvi. What that means is, I am on the maslak of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala I have the same belief as the belief of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Then you can distinguish what group you are in or whatever. Let's say somebody goes to somebody's house for Rishta and they say, okay, we, we come for Rishta, etc. But first we want to clarify a few things. What is your belief? And they will reply, say, we are maslaki ala hazrat. Then you, your heart's at rest and you know, okay, this person is a proper Sunni from the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat and they have a proper Aqidah. But having said that, we mustn't isolate ourselves from the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat worldwide. Because the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat is the worldwide biggest group of Muslims. So when we say we are Brailis, we make ourselves sound like we are just a little group that started in Pakistan, India, in Reli Sharif a little while ago and the people from Turkey and Syria and the Muslims in Morocco and all of these other places where there are great, great scholars and great awliya as well we try to, we then end up separating ourselves from them so what we should do is bear in mind and yes, we are Brailvi, Alhamdulillah. Yes, we are on the Maslati Bala Hazrat, Alhamdulillah as well. But our reply should be and our understanding should be that we are part of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Because there are groups out there and say, these Brailvi, this is a new group. This is a new sect. This is a new cult and denomination. Only started a little while ago. And these people and their beliefs are new beliefs and just random beliefs. But no, we shouldn't separate ourselves from the main pack. You know, like sheep. 
When one sheep goes off on its own, away from the big pack, the wolf catches it. So we've got to stick with the big pack and we've got to call ourselves the proper name which is of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us ability to continue on the correct beliefs that our scholars and our teachers have passed down to us and that we are able to keep our eye on our amal and our deeds as well. To make sure we're not just having conversations about belief and belief. You have belief, then you have action, then you have results. Furthermore to this, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets and messengers to guide them. Approximately 124,000 prophets and messengers were sent to guide mankind. The last of them being Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everybody knows this, this is just a basic thing. After the Dawli Nabawat finished, after the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there were no more prophets and no more messengers and there won't be. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent certain individuals to certain communities from amongst the people regarding the awliya of Allah, the great friends of Allah, the people who are very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not prophets, not messengers, people, but people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored, people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed. And we have many amongst us in the world at the moment, we might not be able to recognize them because they are hidden, hidden gems. I know you have certain people, you got to understand the concept, the worldly concept. Your gold and diamonds, you don't find them hanging off trees. You don't find them in the streets as you're walking through. No, they are deep inside the earth. You will go digging for them. They are very, very difficult to get to because of how precious they are. So the precious people are very, very hard to find. Few in number. But there are certain qualities and certain traits of that individual. When you see them, you think, yes, this is a man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is somebody who has connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And our mashayikh and our ulama, they are the inheritors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is from hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the ulama of the deen are the inheritors of the prophets. They take wirasat from the anbiya ikram. What do they take? Do they inherit money? Do they inherit property and land? No. They inherit the knowledge from the Anbiya Ikram, the knowledge from the Prophet and all the Anbiya before that. They inherit the spirituality, they inherit the characteristics, they inherit the belief. They inherit that ability to understand and recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends these individuals who don't just sit in a corner by themselves and say that I am a Sufi and I am doing Allah Allah and I'm sitting in a corner by myself and I have no regard for anybody or anything else. It's just me and my Lord and that's it. No. There are certain people who live amongst the people. They have their own time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Their private time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where they are conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. But the greatest of those people who are those who not only believe the correct belief, but they spend time in encouraging other people to good works and righteousness and to patience. This is the ayah of Barakah mentioned in Surah Al-Asr. وَالْأَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْ That by the token of time, mankind is in a state of loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who believe. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And do good deeds. وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ And encourage people to the truth. وَتَوَاسُوا بِالسَّبْ And encourage people to good works. So, those people who believe, do good deeds, go out and speak to people, meet people, encourage people, and encourage them to the haq, encourage them to the right way. And when difficulties come to them, they encourage them to patience. These are the great people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whose lives are examples for us. And today, the 29th of Rabbi al Sharif, marks the one year anniversary of Hazur Qibla rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send infinite, numerous, numbers that we cannot even comprehend of blessings and mercy upon them. This individual 
that I have mentioned, you are all familiar with. More familiar than me. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm mentioning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends two communities, individuals, who from seemingly nothing create great legacies. From seemingly nothing create great things. You know this masjid before it was made, this used to be, there were some old, I think, houses here some time ago and then they got knocked down and then this was, uh, people used to throw rubbish here. You know, people used to do fly tipping. There was a sign here saying, no fly tipping from Bradford Council, don't throw rubbish here. But people used to get bags of kachara, mattresses, all sorts of things and just drop them here, where we are now. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave great people, especially Hazrat Saab, the tawfiq and the ability to gather a group of people, inspire them, educate them, spiritually, emotionally build them up and build this great masjid that you have at the moment. Allah. Creating a great platform where not only us, but inshallah our children and their children and their children will receive the blessings from this for years to come. And the legacy continues. And many, many people will be forgotten. But those people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never be forgotten. Whether it's one year, two years, three years, they will never be forgotten. And one thing I will mention here is that the people, certain people like Hazrat Saab, who have invested in such a way throughout their life, that definitely they will be reaping the benefits of this in the grave as well. <laughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has stated in a hadith sharif narrated by Hazrat Abu Raya radiallahu ta'ala an, that when a person passes away, the deeds come to an end, except three. Three types of deeds come in the person's benefit, they continued coming through and topping up. Everything else stops. When a person passes away, then the mass stops, the rosa stops, the zakat stops. Everything else stops except three things. So what are they? Firstly, a sadqai jariya. Ongoing charity. This means not only financially, but emotionally, physically. Anything that you've invested which is going to be ongoing benefit to the people. So somebody gives some money to the masjid here and that will be ongoing charity for that individual when they pass away. So they'll be there in the grave and this account that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has of this individual, this sadqa jariya will keep increasing and increasing. And I know many times they have financially themselves contributed to the masjid and said, I'm not just going to say to you, gee, contribute to the masjid, you know, masjid is zurur but I myself will contribute and here I will be the first to contribute for my own personal wealth to the masjid. Leading by example. And the second thing mentioned is Hadith Sharif after Sadqai Jariya is giving people and sharing with people knowledge from which they derive benefit. Sharing knowledge with them, sharing the Hadith, sharing Quranic information, the uh, understanding from the Quran, the, you know, the correct Aqeedah, the characteristics of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the spirituality side, the whole complete package. Sharing that with individuals so that they can improve their lives. And many individuals will be sat here who through the interaction with Hazrat Sahib have their life has changed altogether. They were heading down one way and then they did a U-turn and they're heading in the other direction now. They might have been on the streets doing all sorts of things. I don't care to go over them. But you know yourself as an individual where you were before you met this great individual and where you are now. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings come through the chosen individuals. And the third thing that is mentioned is a pious child who does the wa for that individual. That is the third thing that benefits an individual when that person passes away. Three things. Sadqa jariya, knowledge from which people derive benefit, and a pious child who prays for that individual when that person passes away. And that, from my little understanding, wouldn't just be the blood child of that individual. You know, because our mashayik, especially in terms of the sawwuf, and in terms of the spiritual order, the Shaykh is the father of the Murid. The Shaykh is the spiritual father of the Murid. Because the physical parents, the mom and dad who give birth to this child, they bring the child into life physically. They bring them into existence physically. But the Shaykh 
brings the murid into existence spiritually. He gives life to that individual spiritually. He reminds that individual who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. He reminds that individual who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is. So that person might be walking and talking, but inside spiritually they're dead. They're literally non-existent, hanging by a thread. And when this individual comes along and guides them, this is what Apir does, he guides. He guides to where? Not to himself, he guides to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He guides to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when all of these individuals do dua for these people, these benefit them as well. So we should also try to learn from this example and spend our time, our effort and our energy on these three things. Because these three things, Sadkai Jariya, knowledge from which people derive benefit, and children who will do dua for us when we pass away, these are the three things that we should be investing our time, our effort, our energies in. Because when our hands are tied, and when we are no longer able to do anything for ourselves, these things will be those that will continue to benefit us. And who knows that it might be that this, because of these things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admits us to paradise through His infinite mercy. So I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability to remember those great individuals who have left a great legacy behind and left a massive mark on our hearts and left a massive influence in our minds and that we continue to remember them in our du'as. Because remembering those who have passed away, those who are present and those who are yet to come is of the sunnah of the Anbiya Ikram. We did this in our namaz every day and I'm sure I mentioned this in many points before as well. So I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability to continue strong, to continue following in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so that on that great day when we are present in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we are given space under the flag of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as well. And when we are through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we enter paradise, we are given space at the feet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because that is the ultimate place and that is the ultimate goal. وَأَحْنُ دَوَاهُمْ عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Surah Tehada Farmaleh, please come forward, fill the roles and pray your sunnah.